Hey guys, today I want to talk about importing, but more importantly, converting your AVCHD footage for editing. The reason I want to cover this is because there are a lot of misguided tutorials out there showcasing a very poor workflow of, honestly, how you never want to work with your AVCHD footage. So really quick, we're going to touch on the difference between compressed and uncompressed formats, and I'm going to show you my workflow for importing and converting AVCHD footage. I'm using the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, um, but the concepts are of course going to stay the same no matter what programs you're using. Your workflow just might be a little bit different. For example, what a lot of these tutorials will instruct you to do is go straight to your camera's footage and import the .mts file, which is the AVCHD codec. This is actually a terrible idea. Um, you never want to edit with your camera's .mts files directly. And the reason this is, is because the AVCHD format, which stands for Advanced Video Coding High Definition, the AVCHD format is a highly compressed format. That means to even view the footage, your computer has to decompress it. For example, if I even try to open one of these clips, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting some more. And then now that it's finally open, I try and play it, and it's not even responding. And then it finally goes. So editing with this is going to be a nightmare. It's going to be extremely sluggish and laggy, and it's going to drop frames left and right. Working with an uncompressed format, however, is exactly the opposite. It is extremely fast, extremely snappy. You can scrub through it really quickly, and it's going to be much, much better for not only effects compositing, but just basic editing. Other pros to working in a, an uncompressed format is one, you'll get better color depth if you'll be color grading your footage at all. And two, if you do any kind of pre-rendering, you won't have as much or any of a quality loss between renders. Whereas if you rendered into a compressed format, you have an immediate quality loss on the first render because it's compressing all of that data. A comparison to photography is like taking the raw file and converting it to a JPEG. You're losing a lot of that data in the compression. And also, if you're using multiple cameras which might not be shooting in the exact same format, it would be much better to convert all of your footage to one consistent format to edit in. So the most straightforward way that I have found to import and convert AVCHD footage is actually using Adobe Media Encoder. So open up Adobe Media Encoder and then go to your camera's memory card and navigate to your footage. Now it'll usually open up in a thumbnail view and it's a little bit faster at processing thumbnails than Finder is, but it'll still take a really long time to process. Of course, from here you can start selecting which clips you want to import, but the problem that you'll run into here is that the file names don't actually correlate with the date that the footage was recorded. For example, these bits of footage here are all from our Death Valley trip that we took in October of 2016. And then these guys are from a trip to Salt Lake City, March of 2017. So the footage is absolutely all over the place. So it's going to be a real pain in the butt, one, just to wait for all the thumbnails to load, and then two, having to sift through a ton of recordings and manually find each one that you want to import from a given day. So the easiest solution, of course, would be to sort this by date, which you could probably do from the list view, except we have name and file path. Gee, thanks, real helpful. Well, as it turns out, you can actually sort it by date. You'll just need to right click in here, say edit columns, and from here you can select what other columns you want it to display. Why they don't have more than just name and file path as the default, beats me. So you can go down to check date created and date modified. I also like to scroll down and check the file size and then you can select OK. So now you can rearrange these columns. Now you can import everything from a given day. For example, I know we went to the beach and recorded a bunch of footage on the 28th of May. So I can go ahead and find the first clip that appears there and scroll down to the last one. So this way you can import all of the given footage from a single day of shooting without having to hunt through a bunch of thumbnails that take a really long time to load. 
So once Adobe Media Encoder has imported everything into the queue, you can go ahead and select all of your footage, and clicking on either format or preset will bring up the same screen. Adobe will ask you if you're sure about changing the settings of all of the clips. Go ahead and select OK. And if you're working on a Mac, I'd highly recommend you use the Apple ProRes codec. So for that, you'll need to select QuickTime and then ProRes. There's a couple different ProRes codecs, but 422 is a good standard. Go ahead and select OK. And then change the output file to wherever you want to output it. You're definitely going to want to double check that because its default output file is actually the same as the source file. So you're, you're not going to want to convert your footage and dump it right back onto the card. So once you've set your format and output directory, you can go ahead and hit the green arrow to start converting all of your footage. So if I open up one of the Apple ProRes clips, as you can see it opens up much quicker than the MTS clip. Here's the ProRes, and it can actually play back and scrub really quickly. So this is overall a much better format to work with, and you can select those clips and then import it to Premiere to start working with. So anyways, this is the current workflow that I always use to import my AVCHD footage. Just remember, it's never a good idea to edit using the AVCHD footage directly. It's always a better idea to convert it to an uncompressed format first and then work using those files. So I hope you guys found this useful, and if you did, feel free to throw me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.